the band called Eleven now, and uh, he, he was pretty involved with Eleven at that time. And uh, we just asked him if he knew of any other drummers or singers, you know, that that would be into jamming with us. And he, he brought up Eddie's name, gave and gave him a tape. And uh, Eddie gave us a tape with a couple of songs that, that he had done with his other band, the Fat Radio. And uh, uh, he ended up singing over like we had, we had an instrumental tape with like eight or nine songs. He ended up singing over three of them. And, he came up and we hung out for like eight or nine, I think it was seven or eight days and had an amazing time. I mean, just played music all the time and just like fell in love with music again, like in a big way. And it's pretty much. Is part of the reason why you decided to disband Mother Love Bone and start a new band so that you wouldn't feel like you were replacing Andrew? That's a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and I think, I think. We really wanted to find somebody that was completely different, you know, than Andy too. And I think, I mean, you definitely did. Eddie was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, we were blown away by how. I'm still blown away <laughs> in a lot of ways. Like, every once in a while, I pinch myself. And go, two years ago, we didn't have a band and didn't know what we were doing. When did you two first meet? Actually, we met at this punk rock club at the Metropolis in Seattle. And he just like gave me a really hard time. Like and at that point, like I had this much sense of humor, like very little sense of humor. And him and this buddy of his, Chris, were like like making fun of like they used to call me Jeff Diction because I was in this band called Deranged Diction. And Squatney, actually, 1957. <laughs> we grew up together. What was that first song we learned? Splexical. My generation, wasn't it? <laughs> and were you guys founding members of Green River? No, no. Actually, um, actually, Mark and Steve uh, kind of kind of put the band together, and Alex, who you know was in a band in, in the punk scene at that time, and, and and they he just came up to me one day and said that you know he liked the way that I played bass, and we got together, and probably about three months later, Stone joined the band. It needed to be louder, and he had a Marshall and a Les Paul, so that just like was like that was louder. That was the key. <laughs> Do you ever find yourself nostalgic for Green River? Do you ever wish you were still playing? <laughs> <laughs> Never. It's like all you have to. I mean, yeah. we played Green River. We made three records. I mean, exactly. that's totally like its own like thing. That's like, okay, we can go back and listen to those records and think, God, that you was so never seen. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and, and the, you know, I think I think Mud Honey does what we did. It's like so much yeah. better. You know, I think they're. I think I think we were definitely going in a completely different direction and. And, and Mark's doing something that he's totally comfortable doing right now. And he's on a major label now, and so <laughs> he sold out. Kids, remember that. Mark Arm sold out. And are Steve you, Turner too. Are you still in touch with any of the, the early Green River bands? Like I think there was a, what 13 in Seattle. <laughs> I see a couple of them around every once in a while. Now, I mean, we, we drove all the way to New York and played in front of like a couple of bartenders and. Couple, couple of street people at CBGB's. And then we want, we played a show with um, Sam Hain, <laughs> which is the myth, which is like the Misfits or Danzig or whatever on Halloween in Detroit. I was thinking the show at Maxwell's. Where I got was, beat uh, up. 8:30 at, at night at Maxwell's. Needless to say, wasn't a lot of people there. <laughs> is there such a thing as the Seattle scene, or is that journalistic hype? Journalistic hype. Well, actually, there is a coffee house the other day that, like, Mark was there, Kim Thale, they were playing chess. <laughs> Bullshit! <laughs> oh. But, I mean, even in the bio, what, I mean, one of you wrote, right? You were referring to, there seems to be a common thread in the Seattle scene. I mean, I know it's been over Yeah, I mean, well, I just, I mean, I guess you just have to define scene. I mean, there's, a, there's some great bands in Seattle, certainly, and they, a lot of them came out of kind of a punk rock kind of club circuit. And I think that was played. more of a scene. I mean, at that time... Because we were all in Seattle. Yeah, no one's there now. Nobody like, toured at that point either, so everybody hung out. And I mean, now we don't get a chance to see anybody. I mean, we come home, and Soundgarden's on tour, and you know, they come home, and we're on tour. Or, that's why we're all together going to quit the business at the beginning of next year. We're going to go fishing. We're quitting the business. God damn it. Me, <laughs> <laughs> me. Uh, tell us a bit about Temple of the Dawn. <coughs> well, we <laughs> Pearl Jam and Soundgarden broke up and formed this band. <laughs> 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 
when Soundgarden got up tour, actually, um, the last time when they went out for Odd and Love, they got up tour, and it was right after Andy had died, and um, and Chris had written a couple songs about Andy and played them for me and Jeff, and said, you know, if you guys want to, you know, help get together and record these songs, and it'd be great. And the songs were Amazing. actually were "Say Hello to Heaven" and "Reach Down," and it was like the, even the demo version that he did at his house, and like totally sick. Amazing. So we decided that we were going to record those two songs, and. Um, and Mike was a guitar, our, our guitar player. Mike McCready um, uh, was start. We were already playing together as far as like starting Pearl Jam, and um, we said, well, maybe Mike could play on it, and, and Matt Cameron. And then we just started rehearsing for these two songs. And I had a couple more songs, and Chris ended up writing like you know four more songs on top of that. And um, and we just rehearsed for two weeks, and we said, well, Soundgarden said, well, we'll pay for it, and then some label will buy it. We thought it was going to be Polygram at the time, but it turns out A and M actually ended up putting it out, and uh, we made the record for. I mean, nothing. Uh, one twentieth of what we normally make, you know, or what you know the average major label, you know, record is made for, and we made it in about, you know, a, probably a total of about two and a half weeks. So, I think in that sense, I think we're more proud of it than anything because it was like no pressure, and we just went in and we just did it, and we didn't like think about it too much, and we left a lot of stuff really just kind of the way it was, and it's pretty jammy, and and it's a record that it's just a great record, I think. It's probably a record that we had as little to, not, to do with as any record that we played on. I mean, a lot, a lot of it's certainly Chris. Definitely. Okay, let's go into more recent history. You guys were on a European tour. Well, we've, been on the, we've been on the road for over 10 months, and I think, I think there just came a point, like, about halfway through that tour that it was just starting to get pretty intense. I mean, just, just being away from home and being on the road all the time and being lonely or being depressed or, or whatever. And, and a lot of times you can take it out on one another or whatever. And it just, I mean, we said a long time ago, if anybody got too sick of, of, of touring, like in the long run, that, you know, a few shows or whatever, or, you know, calling the end of touring, you know, like if, if you decided, I mean, like I said, if, if, if we weren't doing Lollapalooza, we probably wouldn't be touring anymore. We'd probably take a break and we'd go back and make another record. But um, it's one of those things. If it's not, if <laughs> it's, um, <laughs> oh yeah, tell us more about uh, Jim Rose versus Slide Show and some of the other like more exotic and flashy eyelash backgrounds of yours. I, I haven't seen them in like a year, but and, and I heard that there's a there's a lot more to it than, than there used to be. Got a whole crew, definitely that hang. Of the freaks. If, if people that hang heavy things through from <laughs> different parts of their can bodies. Can you say penis on TV? You can I think you that, can. Huh? Yeah, there's not one of the seven words. Actually loud and you can say penis. They hang yes! big, heavy balls from their penises. See, that's one of my constitutional rights that I really, really enjoy. But no, uh, penis is such a more dirty word than <laughs> any of the seven dirty words. But they actually will. Ha he can actually can pick up a cinder block oh. with his penis because he has a pierced penis, which to me is sort of a strange thing. I don't really find myself like wanting to go out and pierce my penis, but I certainly respect him. For and it sends like a really a weird shockwave through your body when he does it too. You're kind of like, when he like, does like, it penis? like, can you say penis? You respect his constitutional right. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Sure. I, I, I really don't, I don't understand the whole body piercing thing very much, like the whole thrill of it or whatever. I, I'm kind of ignorant to that. Fully, but I think there's so many people out there that are really into it. That you should try it, Jones, actually. <laughs> I'm going to pierce my anus. Oh, <laughs> oh you can use that word, too. Um, Hello, viewers. Hello. We have a, a list of interesting rider requests. Uh, do these um, from you guys? Junkyard appliances, live cricket, jumbo mealworm, healthy night crawlers. Well, the one guy, the like the new guy, he eats. Supposedly he eats like maggots and night crawlers and the whole thing. Like just, I'm kind of <laughs> interested to see that. I wonder, even, I wonder even if the he, straight stuff, like the straight jacket, right? Tosses, tosses, tosses his arms up, and tosses it in like a, a rope for <laughs> Hollandaise, I think actually. Okay. Um, Hi, this is Stone. And this is Jeff, and we're from Pearl Jam. Uh, and you're watching 120 Minutes. Do you know you can say penis on TV? Do you know 
Okay. I'm so psyched about that. <laughs> like third grade, we live. Oh, I love that. The week after they said you could say it on TV, but like just over it. They're like, you think it got started? Hey, Ted. Nice penis. Great. Nice penis. Thank you. Hi, this is Jeff, and uh, Stone. I, I actually wanted to ask you a question. Like, what what is your infatuation with penis? God, I don't know. It's it's like kind of. I don't know. Like ever since like third, second, third grade, every like dirty, malleable <laughs> body part. I, Hello. Anyway, we're from Pearl Jam, and we're with Dave Wendell? Kendall. <laughs> Kendall. Kendall Jones? <laughs> you're with Kendall Scott. All right, one more time. <clears throat> this is Jeff, and uh, this is Stone. And we're from Pearl Jam, and we're with Dave Kendall. And you're watching 120 Minutes. <laughs> OK. Hi, this is Stone. And this is Jeff, and I, I have a question for you, Stone. Um, I, I was wondering, what is your infatuation with, with, with the, the penis? Um, well, I don't think it's just penis. I think it's any uh, human body part that's generally covered. Uh, vagina, anus, any All of covered parts. Anyway, you're watching MTV, and we thought we'd just fill you in on, on that. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Stay Stone and Jeff again. Hi, this is sorry. Hi, this is Stone, and this is Jeff, and uh, we're in Pearl Jam, and you're watching um actually censored, the version. censored version of our of our new video. Jeremy they made it made us cut a bunch of stuff out of it. Buy the one in the store. Better. <laughs> okay. All right. Hi, this is Stone, and I'm Jeff, and we're from Pearl Jam. And uh, you're watching uh, MTV, and this is our new video. It's um, Jeremy. It's just Jeremy, not um Jeremy. <laughs> it's um Jeremy. Okay. Uh, hi, this is Stone. And I'm Jeff, and we're here with Perry Farrell. And Lollapalooza, part two. 92. Perry, how's it going? Good to see you too, man. Okay, one more time, just saying you're watching. <clears throat> okay. Hi, this is Stone, and I'm Jeff, and we're from Pearl Jam, and uh, we're at Lollapalooza too. Uh, Perry's going to be with us in a few minutes, but he's coming back. Uh, this is MTV. Okay. What three words would you use to describe Lollapalooza? 